Alrighty, let's try this again. Technology! <laughs> I promise I would have been on time, but technology wasn't allowing it. <laughs> let's see. And we should have, let me make sure the live stream is on, and I have a guest that should be hopefully able to join. Okay, it is live. Great. What's everybody doing today? There we go. I just sent an invite. There we go. Who says autistic? people can't be flexible <laughs> <laughs> yay thank you for rolling with the punches on the technology i really appreciate it everyone well you welcome. know something can, the thing about plans is that sometimes they don't something can always go wrong so i've learned yeah and that's why i try to have two plans so that if one does fail i'm not going to spiral because if i didn't already have this backup plan i probably would have spiraled and been panicking a little bit like <laughs> honestly but I was like, just in case, although I was so confident Zoom was going to work for us. So, usually it's going to work okay, but they like updated their terms. So, like, it's, it is kind of glitchy now. So, yeah, with, whenever maybe there's, an there's update, some kind of, yeah. Yeah, I might have to toggle something in my permissions or my settings. So, uh, welcome everyone to Asking Autistics Live with Phenomenally Autistic. And literally, I had to like practice saying phenomenally, phenomenally. <laughs> that's like a hard word for me. Um, we are live on Wednesday, September 13th, 2023. Uh, it's 208 Mountain Time. What is it? Three Central and Four Eastern? Is that right? Yes. Four uh, four okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, we've, we've got a guest here today, which is really special because we don't have guests very often. Uh, and I've really been wanting to speak with this guest for a long time. Our, our paths crossed, I feel like it was TikTok where I probably yes, came TikTok. across you. Uh, and, we, and we were talking about the, the TikTok a little bit offline earlier, which that could be a whole rant. So we won't go into that. Uh, yeah. but I feel like you're like a hidden treasure on, on Facebook. Like not enough people on Facebook have, uh, know what you're up to. So hopefully this will expose more people to you on Facebook because you're like a little hidden gem there. Um, Thank you. That the Facebook world needs to find. Yeah. Yeah. And Facebook's a weird tricky platform so uh, anything to send people your way um, thank you but, i appreciate yeah. that yeah yeah of course um but before i get going i wanted to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself your name your pronouns uh and you know just a little bit about who you are and you know what what you're excited about sharing today okay Hey, my name is Ayana. Um, most people know me as Phenomenally Autistic. My pronouns are she, her, and I am an autistic artist, author, choreographer. Um, I did theater. I did um, so many things, choreographer. Um, I don't know if I'm forgetting anything. Um, I, have a, I got honored at the United Nations. I have a proclamation. I've illustrated 29 books. So off the top of my head, those are the things that I can think of. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I feel like you have done a lot of things. Uh, what's your favorite, I'm throwing you a curveball question, this wasn't on the script, but what's, what's your favorite book that you've done or what, what book are you most excited about? The new one that is, that is out now that I'm, that I'm like really pushing. Um, I'm autistic and I'm phenomenal, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so obviously, uh, we, we know you're neurodivergent because you've already shared that you're autistic and it is in the name. Can I ask when you learned about your neurodivergence and if there are any other neurotypes you feel like sharing or, um, you know, totally yeah. up to you? Um, I am autistic and I have ADHD. Um, we learned that I was autistic about eight years ago and um, it was a total accident. I was in the hospital for... What was I there for? I was always in the hospital. I am chronically ill. I have five autoimmune diseases. <laughs> Lucky me. But it could be worse because there's over 100 autoimmune diseases. So I only have five. So, um, but I wasn't connecting with my doctors. I wasn't speaking to my doctors. They'd ask me a question and I just kind of look at them and turn away. Um, it, it's, it's really hard for me to speak to people one-on-one -on -one unless they're my family, if you're like right in my face, I probably won't speak to you. Um, I'm definitely not going to look in your eye. 
Um, so they just kind of noticed something and they spoke to my dad and they were asking him, well, how was she when she was a little girl? And so he, he told them how I was. He said that I was withdrawn. I usually just would like to sit in the corner. I like to be left alone. I had black and white thinking. So they, they brought in an evaluation team and they evaluated me and I didn't know what they were looking for. So they came and it was a really long test and I was getting irritated, but they let me take a break. And um, the, the women were really nice. It was two women. And they came back and they were like, yeah, she's on the spectrum. And, you know, we found out um, that I had um, ADHD um, only like two years ago, we found out that I was dyslexic. But I kind of knew that because I struggled to write. If you ever see me write a long caption, it took me a long time to do it. Um, so I got my diagnosis by accident. Yeah, uh, that's lucky. I think it's so lucky uh because so i i think often about how many neurodivergent people in the world just might go completely unnoticed yeah. and we, we just will never know yeah uh just looking at my family alone like i see like members of my family and they go yeah, yeah we're very like <laughs> you know yeah I, uh, I i see some people but i'm you know i don't want them to be like you you're not no doctor but i see a few people in my family because you know it does run in, in people's families and i'm just like you know y'all was talking about me that i'm a little, little weird and i'm like well you guys are a little little strange yourself but i'm not going to say anything because who am i <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah exactly and it, it's hard like sometimes people eventually like figure it out for themselves but you can't just drop that on yeah. them it's like yeah. it, i don't know it just doesn't go well every time i've tried to like drop that on someone it hasn't gone very well they've had to like notice and draw connect the dots themselves i think uh because there's so much cognitive dissonance i think between what people think an autistic person is and what an autistic person yeah. actually is like it's it's not the stereotype when they told me i was autistic i was like no i'm not that's for white people like i had never met a black autistic woman um maybe i had seen a black autistic little boy here and there but as far as a a black autistic women, I, I I didn't know anybody else. I didn't connect with any other black women till I got on TikTok. So mm -hmm. I was like, I ain't not autistic. That's so that's for white people. So I and it took me it took me a year to even accept my diagnosis. I did not accept it and I had like so much self hate. It took me a year to finally accept it and finally love myself and finally embrace it. So it, it was a it was a journey. How, how how much of an impact do you think not having good representation had on just your your journey with trying to accept that part of yourself um it was it had an impact because i'm like okay well i don't know or see anybody that that is like me so i don't want to be out there on my own and be still be a freak because i was a freak before you know i got bullied in school so okay you were a freak before and now you're out here by yourself so you're still a freak so i think that was why it, it impacted me that way and why i was just like i don't i don't want to be autistic so <laughs> that, yeah that why. <laughs> yeah and i think like you mentioned quickly like or briefly earlier that you you found your online community and that was like really like i'm guessing empowering for yeah, you it because was. it let you it accept was, your diagnosis it was like a breath of fresh air and i'm like look at all these beautiful black autistic women so um and now i have parents of little black autistic girls um reaching out to me and i think that's just a beautiful thing so you know, I have no regrets about sharing my story. You know, once in a while you get the trolls that come on your page and I'm just like, whatever, block. But it comes with the territory. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it took me a while to learn about that because I, I didn't understand. I was like, why are people just being mean to strangers? Like, it 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 didn't register when I first Me either. I'm like, if people you don't like over. it, go away. Go away if you don't like it. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. It, it's sad that so many of us who run public facing spaces and pages have to become basically numb almost to the trolling yeah. and like to the just the nastiness the things people would never say and do to someone to their face you know it's horrible uh and, and I, I hate that you've experienced it too but i i can't say that i'm surprised because of how just not, yeah I'm, people I'm, I'm, like, are. I'm like all right well you're yeah. blocked you're blocked <laughs>
<laughs> Good for you. Good for Sometimes you. Sometimes it's people who aren't even following me, and I'm like, get off the hashtag. Get off the hashtag. Yeah, hashtag. Go away. Get off the neurodivergent hashtag. Why are you bothering us? Go away. Yeah. And there are people that literally, like, troll the yeah. hashtag looking for people. That's what to, they like, do. Even, like, some autism moms do that. And I'm like, yeah. you, guys think we're, you guys think we're a bunch of idiots, so go away. Do you not know that your child is going to be an autistic adult one day? I, I will never understand that because it's like I would think as a parent you would want to treat people the way you hope your child is going to be treated one day when they're an adult. But the way the I think like, they get they just go around that because – most autistic adults don't support ABA therapy. I know I don't. So yeah, I yeah, feel no. like they get upset because most of them do support ABA therapy. So they're sure. like, well, what do you guys know? You don't know what y'all are talking about. So I think that they feel like we're just a bunch of dummies. So Yeah, yeah. no, you're, and you're not wrong. ABA is the big um, thing in there. It's like, I have my thoughts about ABA and I like wait until I can put them all into one really long post because I know I'm going to have to mentally prepare for whatever comes out of putting something out into the internet about ABA because the people who buy into that ideology are so embedded in it and so invested in it and a lot of times when you talk and it's you know it's a systemic like problem we're talking about a systemic problem in society we're not talking about individual people trying to shame individual parents or individual people we're saying hey this is a systemic problem that that affects autistic people uh and especially like autistic people who are poor uh like more so a lot of times because they're like oh it's behavioral it's behavioral like let's you just need to stop the behavior like they, they're not as compassionate for us yeah um, how you know? do you like force behaviors on people whose mind is not wired like like we don't have neurotypical wired minds so you're forcing behaviors uh you're forcing neurotypical behaviors on that's abuse like that's abuse so and they they're so angry they're they get so so angry and one lady was like arguing with me over the sia movie i was like go watch it and enjoy it oh and no <laughs> yeah yeah if you love it so much please go watch it yeah please like convince me dog crap is gold <laughs> Like, I'm sorry. You can't convince me. No. Uh, but, you know, but they're, they get really defensive. And, and and that's the thing I've noticed. It's like people feel like we're criticizing, like, a thing or a system. We're not criticizing you as a person, but when they get really yeah. invested in it, like, you know, they, they, they have a hard time separating the two, uh, which is really unfortunate. And I think that actually is what comes down to a lot of the fighting, like, in autism spaces online. Like, yes. a lot of it is that one thing um yeah and it's funny because in other countries like it's not even the stronghold that it has here like when i started doing a lot of my work it was originally in uh, with a lot of advocates in the uk where it's not the gold standard over there uh, and so it's really d interesting when you're on an international stage how that kind of a thing plays out uh, but we have totally got sidetracked that's not where i was trying to go <laughs> Yeah. But I guess we can go really far in the opposite direction, though, because it's it is important. Uh, but so they they only want us to talk about what's wrong with being autistic. Yeah. That's that's what ABA does, yeah. right? The, the glue. Whenever I see like a documentary, it's like ten of the same people with ten of this ten. I, I kind of like saying I kind of don't really like saying on the spectrum, but they're all on the same part of the spectrum. And I'm like, where's the variety? I'm like, I'm not on that part. So it's, it's always the same side of autism and it, they always want to push the same narrative. And I'm just like, like, I, I did not enjoy love on the spectrum and people were like raving about it. And I'm like, well, I hated it. So I don't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I heard that they kind of edited it to make it more awkward than it actually was like adding more pauses and things, which I think that's really disrespectful. Yeah. Um, so that, that's enough to make me like, no, this isn't okay. Um, but, you know, thinking about like how they always focus like on like are, are making us awkward or what they think is like wrong with us. What is your favorite thing? What's your favorite thing about being autistic? Because I think there's a lot of awesome things um, about being uh, autistic. Paying attention, paying attention to details and like noticing things that other people um, might, might not notice. And um, like I've never like hated, hated myself. Um, but 
being diagnosed made me love myself more. So I believe now it's like the self love and the self awareness. Mm -hmm. And um, if it makes me weird, I enjoy being weird. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to be unbalanced. Like there are some challenges. Like, what do you think? Like, if you had to pick what's like one of the biggest challenges, like you've had to overcome? Um I'm really struggling right now with like overstimulating and being overstimulated and I cannot leave the house without my noise canceling headphones. So I'm really sensitive to everything right now. So that's mm -hmm. one of the challenges um, that I'm having. Um, like even with food, I'm having like a lot of issues with food right now. I can't like deal with the taste. I'm like gagging. And so it, like those are some of the challenges that I'm having right now. Um, so it's like hard to be around people because like if they're talking too long like i gotta get away from you, you're overstimulating me so right oh, now wow. i'm just kind of having like issues with a lot of things and it it comes and goes so it's 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 not that great right now but you know it has its ups and downs now it's just a little bit down but it doesn't last forever yeah well, if, if there's anything you need, you know, during our, our broadcast today, if you need a moment, please don't hesitate to let me know. Yeah, I'm okay, uh, because, you know, we're virtual, so it's okay. You're not, yeah, like, it's a right here in my face, right? and my phone's kind of far back, and, you know, I'm, like, sometimes when I, I think it's because we, we both understand, and you understand how I feel. Sometimes when I'm speaking to people, they really don't understand that, so um, they can be a little bit um, imposing, and... Um, sometimes like, you know, they're using the wrong term, so they might think I'm being a little bit rude. That's another, that's another thing that's a little bit challenging, like correcting people and telling them the right terms and telling them what's rude. And, you know, they'll, they'll have like a blue, the puzzle piece on the flyer from, for my podcast. And I'm just like, I'm um, sorry, but uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. So, like, those are some of the challenges, like, just trying to, you know, tell people what's correct and what's, we don't support that, and, yeah. Yeah, hi, dog. Uh, yeah, and that'll, ha that, that, that'll happen, too, and I'll, I'll get one of those emails, and I'll look at something, uh, and then I'll see something's wrong, and I'm like, I gotta close this and look at this tomorrow, because I, I mentally <laughs> need to prepare for a day before I do <laughs> You know, because people don't really understand about how language uh, impacts our unconscious biases of people and how, like, when you talk about groups using stigmatizing language, like, you impact how people perceive and see those groups of people. You know, people don't understand that. Yeah. So it really matters not to describe any group of people with language that is overly negative or just not balanced, you know, not, not humanizing. Because I think people do the other way and they're like, oh, you're a superhero. And I'm like... I'm a human. <laughs> and then, you know. and like, even like some of the, like, like some of the autism t-shirts, they're so offensive. They have like, they'll have like, there was one with like four owls and there was one hanging up and down, upside down. And that was supposed to be the autistic owl. And then he was like made of puzzle pieces. And I was like, who designs these t-shirts? Some of them are so offensive. And then I put a video on TikTok and like, people were like offended because I was like, Sometimes I see whole families wearing matching autism shirts and they have like the most offensive t-shirts on. And this one mom was like, and I said something about ABA therapy and she was like, well, my daughter's in ABA therapy. And like, okay, well, that's fine. She's not my daughter, but this is my opinion about ABA therapy. So it, it is, um, I just deleted her comment though, because I didn't want that to be the conversation on the video. And I was just speaking about, you know, um, some parents they do it and it's very innocent and they just weren't educated correctly so that was the direction mm -hmm. that i was going in with it so i just like deleted her comments but that that's another challenge is like when the autism moms like all attack you mm -hmm. yeah and like people don't understand that the puzzle piece is linked to ABA therapy like the original puzzle piece logo was a crying child on a green and black logo and it was like, you know, this autistic people missing a piece was the whole reason they we need ABA, air quotes, because they had to construct a person because we weren't people. Yeah, and, so, and then like, they get offended when you try to explain to them that, you know, like autism speaks is not like a really, uh, yeah. it's not the organization you should be looking to for like inspiration and resources because they're going to, they're going to refer you to ABA therapy. They speak so highly about it. So it's mm -hmm. just like, I don't like fault them because when I first started looking for 
um, like resources that came up first. But first, usually the first things is usually the best. But now I'm learning that first is not always best because I looked on there. Um, I think I had a poster on my page because, you know, I drew it and it had a puzzle piece. One of the earlier autism books that I drew had puzzle pieces in it. And as I started learning, I really started hating it. Like I, I despise the puzzle piece so much now. So like, you know, as you go along yeah. and you learn, and I still have it on my page because, you know, I just want people to see the, how, growth. you know, I, as I went along yeah. my growth and how I learned and how, yeah, I, I, I did see these things on the Autism Speech, Speaks page and I freaking hate Autism Speak now. So, um, <laughs> And that's an important reminder for people to have patience mm -hmm. while people are learning because, you know, we, 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 when we know better, we, we do better, but we have to yeah. kind of give people an opportunity to learn better also without like shaming them. But like some people I think are just so like defensive, like they, they're going to feel shame no matter what, I guess. Yeah. Um, so it's like, I try to like, just put the information out there and it's like, this is just here as FYI, you want to look at yeah, this. If you don't like it, you can keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, like, they, there always will be that one person that just feels they have to, they have to say something. Um, and then that's kind of like the thing. It's like that, that's what motivates me to do what I do is like, I realized when I found out I was autistic, there were so many like misconceptions and myths out there. And I was like, I need to like start correcting some of this because this is nonsense out there. Like, so that was one of my main motivators. What would you say? motivates you to do like all of like all of the different things you do because you do a lot of things <laughs> um well I've always been into art because you know I was I was different um it was obvious that I was different but we just didn't know why so I feel like art was like always there for me and I always had a place to go within my art so um the thing that motivates me to do my art is that because it was like my saving grace so mm -hmm. I did, I sold my first painting when I was seven years old. So oh, wow. it's, it's just always been there for me. And then um, so like the time timeline was like first the art, then the dancing, then the theater, back to the dancing. And then, um, then the illustrating of the books. And right now what I'm doing most is the illustrating of the books. So, um, and I, I did coloring books as well. So that's my, like okay. my favorite. Yeah, that's like my favorite thing right now. I, 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 I enjoyed everything, but that's my favorite thing. That and probably theater. Those are my two favorites. I love that you're, you're, you have a theater history to you. Like I, I, oh, the dog's trying to knock this over. I have a the, uh, a the, like I come from a theater family. Uh, and so like I was raised in like the community theater. And I think that really helped me so much as an autistic person. Like, I don't know, it probably is, also though unfortunately one of the reasons i had such a complex mask because i was like oh it's just theater in real life which was a yeah terrible, you, like, you can hide theory. in the character you're not you're showing up but you're showing up as a character so you mm -hmm. don't you're masking but it's okay because you're like it's okay because i'm this character i'm gonna hide behind this character so it's okay even though we're not supposed to mask but i'm like well this is what we're supposed to do we're in theater so i'm gonna uh -huh. hide behind this character so mm -hmm. it was okay mm -hmm. yeah and it was funny because like talking about my, my, I've tried to explain like masking to one of the elders in my family. I'm not going to out them specifically. <laughs> and I was trying to, cause I, I, they're like me. They're like, just like me. I was trying to explain like the camouflaging and the masking to them. And, and they described it just as you didn't like, that's just what you do, you know? And they're, they're a theater person too. <laughs> it was like, you know, I think there's something that's pretty to cool. it. And, like, like, yeah, I was like, you know, there's probably a lot of neurodivergent artists and, and theater people out there and really like that creativity. Cause like for me as an autistic person, like similar to how you said art, and like the different like hobbies where I can just kind of do by myself with not anybody else like intervening and I can just kind of be with it are so like rejuvenating and crucial and when I was burned out and unwell I think that creativity was like one of the first things to go yeah which was really hard because it was like then I didn't have those those coping they really are like coping, skills, coping you know the coping mechanisms i had a period of time where i wasn't doing like it i wasn't, wasn't doing with my art i got back into my art probably during the pandemic like there was a few people that i was just like inspired to do art for and that kind of really got me back into art and i learned new skills and 
um like from 2020 to now like my my style of art it just got better and everything like even my illustrations if you look at the books that i did before and you look at the books that i did now everything is just everything just looks better and just like my skills skills had just improved so much so i did have a time where i wasn't doing that i wasn't drawing i wasn't painting i wasn't doing any of that i was just like everybody was like how come you don't be drawing no more how come you doing i was like let me alone so <laughs> you know something i think about artists uh, and maybe this is why being autistic might help artists is that I noticed like I took years off from art too and then got back into it and when I got back into it I think because even when I wasn't doing art I was actively noticing art in the world like the shapes and the shadows of the world and yeah you pay attention to the details yeah yeah, so it was like I was still thinking like an artist even when I wasn't doing art and so when I picked art up again it was like I had still had some kind of skills improve even when I wasn't doing art which I didn't expect yeah (laughs) you know which is kind of cool. I, I, it's interesting to hear, like, you, kind of, you've had a little bit of a similar experience. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want to do it. Leave me alone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it, it's, it's, I'm, gl- I'm glad you're doing art thank, again. Um, thank you. And look to see more, more stuff from you. Uh, so back to, I guess, a little bit about the challenges. If you could change one thing to make our world more accessible to autistic people, what would you change? um the ignorance in other people because i feel that um we didn't ask to be born this way um i feel like a lot of us are okay with ourselves you know like we have our ups and downs but we don't hate ourselves so why do you hate us there's nothing wrong with us we're just autistic so i would change the ignorance that of that others have and the like the stigma was because you really don't know a lot about autism and autistic people unless you speak to us because every autistic person is different mm-hmm. yeah I, I think i i would probably agree with you on that because that that's what makes it so hard is like there's either all these stereotypes like people think autism is one particular thing which is neither of us right yes. this little white boy this little you know seven to ten and white then boy, when little blonde he grows white boy. up He's not going to be autistic anymore when he turns yeah. 18. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, what about women? What about girls? Mm-hmm. What about trans, non-binary people? What about black and brown people? Like, my partner is also autistic, you know, doesn't fit that little white boy profile. Like, most of the autistic people I know actually don't fit that profile, you know? Yeah. And when any of us tries to, like, share, like, I know, especially when I first found I was autistic, I would tell people, oh, I'm autistic. And people would just be like oh, are you sure? Or people would even be like, I don't believe you, or you must be high functioning. It was like the response oh, people had. I hate functioning uh, labels. <laughs> Why? I, I don't like functioning labels because I feel like it denies people who are high functioning to get like services that they need. And like, because you don't know what somebody may need because you think they're high functioning. You don't know what they what they're dealing with behind closed doors like they may look okay because they're masking and get home and fall apart so I, I I really don't really don't like functioning labels because um you're autistic if you're autistic you're autistic yeah I, I agree I think 100 and that was like the thing I noticed when I tried I was like I went through this stuff diagnostic process you know at 29 and that one I was like well why bother well I need accommodations or I'm not going to be able to keep working so I was like I got to do this and then I had the diagnosis and then it was like oh you're too high functioning you know you never asked for accommodations before so you must be high functioning so that means you don't need accommodations it was like <laughs> wait what like I was literally falling apart like my mental health was horrible my physical health was horrible uh and they're like, oh, but you're so high functioning. It's like, you, you've seen me like wasting away, lose like 30 pounds in like a couple months and I'm, I'm sick and you know I'm sick, uh, but I, I, I'm high functioning, yeah. you know? It's like, wow. Yeah. Did you, did you, have you ever had trouble where you're trying to ask for accommodation and they're like, oh no, you're too high functioning or, you know, said, oh, I'm not going to give you accommodations. Um, well, when I was diagnosed, we really weren't given, like, we, they kind of was just like, okay, you're autistic, um, there you go, you're autistic, bye. So we weren't really given, we had, like, no idea what to do. 
um, any therapies that I got. My dad kind of went online and did some research. So we were, it was just kind of trial and error with us. And we found that the therapies that worked best for me were CBT therapy and DBT therapy. So we just, we just found what worked best for me mm -hmm. and what helped me. And my dad did that. So nobody helped us do that. My dad did that. So we got, nobody gave us any help. So my dad did everything. And, and that's the thing that I've noticed is really common, especially if you're an autistic adult. Like if you're an autistic kid, well, maybe this is worse. You're, you're handed the, uh, that autism speaks packet a lot of times. Which yeah, they is, sing like, the ABA. Terrible. Yeah, like you, that, that, you're recommended something. And as an adult, they're just like, sorry. I, I feel like I got lucky when I was diagnosed. The person who diagnosed me recommended a few books by autistic, autistic authors. So I had like something. But there was not like resources or no like suggestions. Like I didn't even know how to ask for accommodations or like how to advocate for myself. Uh, and it went really terribly every time I tried at first because I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, and there was just really little to no support for autistic adults. And a lot of the support for autistic kids is traumatizing, you know, stuff that they're recommending, which uh, it is probably worse. So, like, we, so we've got to, we've got to do better, um, you know, and then they're like well, putting, pouring research and uh, like autism speaks, you know, I, I'm, I'm never going to be able to forgive that they used to spend so much, you know, of their energy and trying to find a cure you know, for autism, even if they remove that language from their, their, you know, their thing, it's like, that, that's still, I'm still suspicious, you know, because all of that money looking into a cure could have looked into like providing maybe better resource packets to help autistic adults, you know, to help us learn about our sensory profiles or to, to help us like explain our needs to people like i could have like give me some scripts like that would have been priceless to me <laughs> when i was first diagnosed uh because i didn't know how to deal with it um and, and how, how long would you think it took you to get to where you could advocate for yourself pretty well i think that took me a few years um well it took me about since it took me a year to accept myself so that was one year down the drain mm -hmm. um i didn't mm -hmm. start like speaking up for myself until about 2019 so it took you know it took a few years so um because i was just like i when i accepted it i accepted it but i was just like okay well i'm just going about my business I, i'm autistic i'm going about my business but once I was just like, well, where is everybody else that look like me <laughs> that's autistic? So that's when I was like, all right, well, I, I need to find some people that look like me. People that look like me need more visibility. People that look like me, mm -hmm. I want to know, are they getting resources? So that's when I was like, all right, well, you know, and I, I need to find more people that look like me and I need to see if they're getting the resources that they need. So that that was like, it, it took me a few years to... Um, to to decide that I wanted to start advocating and just doing what I can do to um, to try to get more visibility for yeah. Black autistic yeah. women. Yes, and it's so important because there really isn't enough representation um, of autistic people. Period, but especially like autistic people that are not pasty. <laughs> you know. Um, a slow in the dark folks. Uh, there's too there's 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 so many of us um, that you know we need more representation. We need more autistic women. We need more autistic trans people um, and autistic adults. Uh, but yeah, especially. Um, hang on a second. I just lost my my point on the scrolling. I like lose my track of thought. Hang on. Okay, here we go. Um, so we were talking a little bit about the diagnostic process uh, and we, 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 we know because we talked about this a little bit already that it does kind of cater to, you know, one specific type of autistic person. Um, like, what do you think about the diagnostic process and like, how, how could it be made better? How could it, you know, what do we need to do to fix it? Because it's so broken. Like if for something like, what would one thing from your perspective do, like be to like make it more inclusive and fix it? Um, well, a part of it seemed like it was for kids. Like, mm -hmm. they have, like, these shapes and these blocks and stuff. And I was like, what the fuck? What were they doing with this? Like, so, like, some of the, um, like, that part, like, maybe there needs to be, I don't really know how they test children, but I don't think adults need that. Or maybe 
all adults. Um, so that part, and, and maybe there should be more written, more a more written mm -hmm. part. So those are the few things that I see because they really, some of the part, they really had me like playing with blocks and stuff. And I was just like, <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I just oh, wow. I didn't understand that, and I was, and, but I know that with me, they weren't just testing me, you know, for autism. They were testing me for everything, trying to figure out why mm -hmm. I was the way that I was. So, I I don't know which part of the test was for autism, but I know I didn't like that whole evaluation. Why you got me playing with blocks? Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, that, it it does it does uh, seem a bit juvenile and. Like, I didn't have to play with blocks. Okay, that, I was like, wow, when I heard that. I didn't have to play with blocks. But my entire evaluation was pretty much, except for, like, I did a test for anxiety. And, like, I, that was, like, in the now. But, like, my, my the autism tests, like, I had to fill out, like, a bunch of sheets and stuff. Like, self-evaluation. Yeah, I did, I did. They did interviews. I did sheets. I filled it out, like, um, like, a little booklet. But a lot. A lot of it was about my childhood and even like they did interviews of people that knew me and it was like they really spent more of the time talking to people that knew me growing up, yeah. up about how I was. They asked my dad how I was when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that's probably one of the biggest problems in my opinion as well is that they're looking at a profile of an autistic child to do, like yeah, absolutely they're not they don't know what autistic adults look like they don't know what we look like once we start camouflaging and hiding our autistic traits they don't like there there are some uh some screening tools that like are supposed to compensate for masking uh, and we were taking some of those quizzes but the wording on like the you know, it's just like the wording on these things they're obviously written by non-autistic people and it's like we need yeah. autistic people to design these things and it needs to be like more balanced like strengths and weaknesses instead they, of all weaknesses they, I, I feel like they do think it's for kids because even sometimes when i'm at the airport i have my noise canceling headphones on and like sometimes they make me take them off to go through security but sometimes like one time they were like she had her dad says they're on for autism and well, why does she have a mind? She's an adult, for, and she says her for autism, and so it was just like one time in the Atlanta wow. airport. So I was just like, I'm not taking them off, and my dad was just like, just take them off and go through security, and then just put them right back on because airports are very overstimulating. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like it, it, it was just, it's just like, um, y'all want me to bug out in here? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> one of my worst experiences. Uh, disclosing I was autistic because I was trying to get help was in the airport like one of the guys at the counter I I'm like trying to ask him where a gate is but it's loud and everything you, know, you can't hear in there like all the sounds and I'm just like he's talking to me and I'm not processing anything he's saying and I'm just like sir I'm autistic it's loud in here can you point or something because I can't understand what you're saying yeah and then he stopped and started talking to me like I was five. Yeah. And like, then he, then he led that. me to the plane, which was nice. But it was really like, he talked to me like a baby the entire time. Yeah, I don't like that. And like, if you say something to me and I, and I kind of don't comprehend it, I kind of need to just say it a different way. But you don't have to be like, the gay is, like, I don't like that. And also like people who really don't know anything about autism and they think that there's a certain look or they think you look a certain way. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you may be able to look at me and you just think I'm having like anxiety, but you know how they have, when they tell you to board, if you need a little bit of help or, you know, you, me and my dad board then because I can't deal with everybody boarding at the same time. And there was this guy and he was looking at us and he was sucking his teeth just thinking we, we just wanted to get on the plane first because I didn't look autistic. I didn't look like something was wrong with me. So, you know, people like one need to mind their business and two need yeah. to understand that like there's no look to autism. You know, I'm what autism looks like. Different people, that's what autism looks like. So, it was mm -hmm. just like I, I just I was just looking at this man like my dad was like don't say nothing just go because he knows I would have said something. The majority of people still think autistic people are all like under ten. Yeah, like, like little, pretty sure. But then, kids, and it causes like, so many problems. Yeah, because I yeah. like I can't deal with like people standing too close to me and like when you get on mm -hmm. a plane, people act like the line's gonna move closer if they stand close to you and yeah, they're like, and they're, like rubbing on you. So, like I no. can't deal with that. So we always mm -hmm. board like. 
we board first we do priority boarding so i'm just like okay yeah yeah like and when i fly a lot of times i used to i haven't flown in years now since covid but i'd fly southwest and so it's like you if you have disability boarding you can board first so i can get like a window seat and i'm not gonna have be if i can't handle being in the middle of two people i don't know touching me the entire yeah time. i get like, the window seat too. and not i just need to be <laughs> off in a corner where nobody's gonna touch me so i can lean against the wall you know that's that's all i need yeah i don't want um, no strangers touching me at yeah i I would freak out and, and then they wouldn't even want to sit next to me oh, they'll be like get yeah, me away no. from her please yeah yeah uh, uh it's like yeah you're looking at me now but uh if if i don't take care of myself you're going to be looking at me way differently in a minute <laughs> yeah yeah unfortunately uh and, and that's the hard thing with being in public in a public space as an autistic person like there is this dis like people get so upset when they feel like you are getting something they want that they can't have or getting and they don't realize it's like you, equalizing yeah getting something they think you don't deserve or something that you don't need when it's really something you need and something you're entitled to so that's the thing that i don't like because you really don't you don't know anything about autism so how do you know that we don't need it or how do you know that we're not entitled to it if you don't know anything about autism? Like, I don't want, I don't always want to wear mm -hmm. my medical alert bracelet because I have one for yeah. you know, epilepsy and stuff, but I don't always want to wear that. It's just like, why do I have to walk yeah. around with that to prove to you that I'm autistic? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we shouldn't have to out ourselves to be treated with compassion or be believed when we say hey i need this to, so that my life isn't you know to make my life better like why why is that a trouble i get that in the workplace too like i i'm so annoyed with the workplace structures where they're like you you, you need to out yourself in the interview process so we can accommodate your interview and it's like no your interview process just needs to be accessible in the first <laughs> place like we shouldn't have to out ourselves uh, because I've worked in workplaces that weren't accessible and you have to go request disability accommodation. And then when you get it, everyone is jealous of you because they feel you're getting special treatment. And then it puts a target on your back and it's like, because they want what you have. And it's like, yeah, the workplace sucks. We just need to fix it for everybody and stop gatekeeping and society like mirrors that in so many forums, which is really frustrating. And I think that that overloads into all the internet world too where you get the people driving by like you're not autistic i don't believe you just dropping those yeah I hate comments when people say that and i'm just like how do you know you 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 watch me on one minute tiktok you listen into a 45 minute podcast you don't know the struggles that i go through behind doors nobody does except for my dad and then my family sometimes mm -hmm. oh you know they they watch me grow up they they watch the struggles that i had growing up even some of them just thought that I was a little brat or that I was picky and wouldn't eat nobody's food. You know what I mean? So don't don't judge. You don't well, you don't really know what you're talking about. Yeah. And that's what I think makes running like a public facing page so difficult is because you you have people dropping in that have no idea what they're talking about coming in, just being nasty and maybe I don't know. I think they have to know they're being nasty, but maybe they don't know. I don't know. Uh but do you have any advice for anyone out there who's considering sharing their lives on the internet as we do other than like, don't know? <laughs> so um, like, well, do it, but... I would say um, in that as for that aspect, you have to like, like leave it there. Like when, when you're done with that, go back to your, your, your real life and leave your internet life on the internet mm -hmm. meaning your feelings don't take your feelings from the internet into the real life or you'll be thinking about it all day you'll be depressed you'll you'll be keep thinking about the comments that people say all day so make sure you separate the two realities that's what that's what i would say about somebody who's considering um you know putting yourself out there because while i'm transparent i'm very private like people know that i have autoimmune diseases but you don't know which ones they know that i have siblings but you never seen them so while i'm transparent i'm also very private yeah and that's important too like with us like people know we're traveling they never know where we are in the moment they know where <laughs> yeah. we are but they're, you know like we have you have to be really careful and protect yourself because there are people out there with malicious intent who will want to harm you and do bad things with information so you really do want to like be aware of what you're sharing i think that's 
really wise advice uh, just to, to protect yourself. And also I would say uh, for autistic people, because a lot of us, like it's hard to switch things off. Like when we ruminate, we get stuck on something. So figure out what you can use to distract yourself. If you do get stuck on that nasty comment that someone left, uh, if you're someone that gets stuck on things, um, because you, you have to be, you, you're absolutely right. You have to be able to let that go and get to the point like we're like we're now like years later it's like whack-a-mole like swat and flight like no 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 like gone block 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 i don't mm -hmm. care like every now and then i'll take a screenshot because something they say is so ridiculous it's almost funny because it's like just you look like you know nothing about what you're talking about right now like yeah when i wrote my in my um article about you know black autistic women there was a lot of white men who got upset oh. and one of them one of them, he was like, he was like, look at black women making everything about themselves, like always. But then he was like, I have um, two autistic nephews. And I'm like, okay, so you're saying we're making everything about us, but you just brought in your two autistic nephews, meaning you're making it about you. So I was like, you're blocked. You know, I, I, I don't have time for that. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> and that's the problem. Like some people, especially probably white guys, uh, <laughs> are used to everything being about them like a lot of times and I got that too when I first started talking about my LGBTQIA intersections in my life with being autistic because at first I didn't really talk about that on my page uh, and then when I started like I almost completely made a whole different page for it because there was a demographic of people that were like I don't want to see this on an autism page like this, what does this have to do with autism and it's like a lot for me personally it's a major intersection in my life uh, and it's like, also too, this never was really just an autism page. It's a page about my life and I happen to be autistic. So a lot of contents about autistic stuff, because that's like the most things people don't know about, <laughs> you know, they're uneducated about, but, uh, there, there's just a, a bunch of nonsense out there, you know? Definitely. Um, Let's see. Uh, oh, wow. We're getting down. We got two more questions. Then we can look and see if there's anything in the comments. Uh, the, the next one is, is there anything you want people to know? Or are there any, um, you know, just anything you want to share uh, before I, I let you brag on yourself and your projects? Anything and I want to look share. at questions. Yeah. Anything I want to share. Anything I want to share. Um, I don't know. No, not really. You asked some really good questions. So <laughs> I, I shared, you know, you, I shared my opinions. You led us and in some good directions to some stuff I didn't even know we were going to get into. <laughs> it was, it you was, asked it really was good fun. questions. And you, 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 were, uh, you were really willing to, to share. Uh, and I appreciate that because some people aren't willing to touch some of those topics like the ABA stuff. So you know, I appreciate yeah, you I, even I being am. willing to go there. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I don't even usually request that of people because I know like how, how it can be. So I pre I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, okay. Let's look, look at questions first. Let's see if there's any questions. Let me look in the comments. And then, you know, what's interesting is I'm not sure if it's only showing your face or if it's showing my face and your face. Cause David said it might not be showing me on his phone, which is weird. Cause I see both of us. Do yeah, you see I, both of us? I, I see both of us. Okay, maybe it was just David's phone. Let's see, I'm trying to scroll back to the comments to see just if there was anything. Uh, Matthew Russian said hello. I don't know if they're still here. Matthew, hi, if you're still around. <laughs> that was a while ago though. Uh, my mom was watching today. I don't know if my mom's still here. Hi, mom. <laughs> uh, Raymond had said hi. Uh, oh, Ray. Avia said, two of my favorite humans. Oh, you're so sweet. I hope I got your name right. Uh, please correct me and tell me I did a bad job if I got it wrong and help me get it right. Because I don't like messing up people's names. I just am really bad at reading phonetically. <laughs> let's see. Um, a lot of people were just kind of silently creeping in and out. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dwayne said, I think there are a lot more undiagnosed NDs this is just the beginning and i will agree uh like i'm 37 and when i was graduating high school was 2005 and so 
they didn't start doing like routine screenings and pediatric visits. I think it was like 2002 or something like that. And I wasn't pediatric and, you know, I was, I was a high schooler. I was, I was almost an adult in 2002 when they started screening everybody. Uh, and so people my age and older, like we were like, we're missed. We're completely not even acknowledged. We weren't screened. And I think once the, the people who were like, are those, kids are 2002 is that long enough now that they're 18 are they coming of age i feel like we're going to see a lot more in those numbers once they come of age. Uh, math math isn't my numbers me are, neither i was like somebody in the comments headaches. <laughs> somebody yeah i was like I'm, I'm that's too too much numbers for me i was like somebody tell me i feel like i know it was getting up there last i don't have to i don't have a job where i check ids anymore so i don't, I don't know <laughs> my glasses on so i can't see like i saw something come up but i don't have on my glasses so all i see is like your neurodivergent rebel thing okay uh yeah someone was saying i hardly ever see autistic people of various places on the spectrum represented uh yep let's see a lot of people just silently watched um <laughs> I was recently put in my place by some autism moms and it sucks. They weren't willing, wait, they weren't willing to try to understand what I was saying. Yeah, I, I really, I try to now, because when I first found out I was autistic, I didn't understand that the, that was a thing. And so you would accidentally like drop in somewhere and leave a comment. And you didn't realize you were in one of those. They're like places. a cult. They're like a cult. Yeah. Yeah it's you're not wrong and it's like you would drop in and you would immediately just be like flooded with gaslighting and uh yeah it's not a good thing to accidentally drop into them more neurodivergent art makers please Dwayne says yay i love i love connecting with other artists that's why I, I try to share like every now and then have like hey art post share your art because i think there's a lot of this out there and i don't know i'm an art I'm an art kid, you know, I was raised in art and theater. So I don't know. I think I, I, I like that stuff. That's what I'm personally into. So I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> yeah, know? me too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ravia said, I don't mask very well or heavily, but I've been told to get over it. And that's the problem is like why I think it's so important for those of us who can safely be open on openly autistic because it's not always safe you know, to be so, so that that's a privilege in itself. But those of us who can sh to be openly autistic, because some of some autistic people literally cannot mask, they cannot hide their autistic traits. And so when we are open, you know, and we, we're, we share ourselves with the world, hopefully it does give space for those autistic people who are unable to camouflage, like, and also space to be accepted oh, as well. I don't think um, non-autistic people understand how exhausting it is to mask. Like, you mask all day, and then you get home, and you're burned out. You get home, and you you like you fall out, and you gotta lay down. You gotta get in the bed. I don't think that um, people understand that. It's it's not really safe for us to mask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that's that that's what happened when I was diagnosed autistic. Was I was so burnt out from like masking because I was working so many hours in a job where I had to be not autistic. Like That's because it wasn't like okay theater for me you to be just autistic. Go there and be yes. go to theater and be all eccentric and be yourself and they're like, Oh you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm just really into it today. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, but it, it it really like for me, I was masking and camouflaging so hard that I I was like contemplating driving off a bridge. Like I didn't want to like, cause it just seemed so hopeless and I couldn't mask anymore. I was getting like, I was like, I can't keep this up anymore. I can't keep doing it. And I was like, as I was recovering from burnout, which took like five, six years to start to feel myself again, I wasn't sure in the beginning if I'd be able to ever mask and like camouflage myself again, you know, because it like yeah. the ability. Yeah, you were, you've seen my TikToks, I stim all the time and I, <laughs> I don't oh, care. One of my favorite things about you, because I was like, I love it because it's real. It's you know, yeah. I recognize like a lot of those hands. You know, I'm at my, my photo shoots and I'm like hopping around and but like you know, that's a photographer I work with all the time, so he knows and he knows that you better get the shot when you can. So, yeah, you know. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and like sometimes, like Dave will be like, "What'd your hands do?" I liked it; it was cool. I was like, "I don't know; they just do stuff," <laughs> and because I feel comfortable, you know, around my partner, uh, like they do all kinds of stuff. I don't even know what they're doing, you know. And w- when I just like had to be somewhere where it wasn't appropriate, because I would get like on my reviews, I would have notes about like my posture and my body language. Like literally in my performance reviews at work, like inappropriate posture and body language in front of clients, like was a or thing. sometimes like I slouch over for comfort, like it's like yeah. comforting. And sometimes like I like to wear like a lot of hoodies, and people are like, "Why you got on a hoodie?" Because it's comforting and you feel safe. Mm-hmm. So I don't think yes. people understand that. And I saw like this thing for like a weighted hoodie, so I need to look into that because if they have that, I need it. That- that sounds perfect. I love my weighted blanket. That yeah, was like life changing once so, they got cheap enough and like, that I could afford one. <laughs> with the bla- the with a weighted blankets, like everybody used to laugh at us for having one, but now like since the neurotypicals discovered them, now they're like okay and they're cool now because why did the neurotypicals have to accept it and think that they were cool, but we were all crazy and weird when only we had them? Yeah. Uh, and that's for us that's kind of actually the annoying thing like uh, w- watching a few years ago when fidget spinners got trendy it was like now everybody has a fidget spinner and like yeah. when we had yeah. fidget which tools. is like which is bad because when autistic children needed them in school they can't have them anymore because everybody because has, to have trendy. Them in school, so the teachers mm-hmm. would take them even from the autistic children and that's so unfair yeah and you know it's it's annoying that it has to be mainstreamed by non-autistic people before it's socially acceptable. Like, yeah, that's just yeah, so frustrating. That, it is. But I, but I guess the good side of that is, like, I always try to look on the bright side of something, is a lot of the things, like, the sensory weighted blankets used to be so expensive. It used to be, like, 200 bucks for a weighted blanket. And I was like, I can't pay 200 bucks for a blanket to see if it works. Mine was, and now like, affordable. yeah, mine but what- when I got my first one, it was like 140, so oh, wow. it wasn't 200. And then, like, because I got two, the the most recent one that I got, it was like 80 dollars, so it wasn't as much as the first one that I got. So, um, and I want a new one just because. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I don't and know. How, I just really gotta cheap. look around and see. I don't know how much it's gonna be yet, so I'm just gonna look around. Yeah. Like, a lot of times you can find them in, like, clearance sections of, like, those, like, box stores and stuff that sell, like, furniture uh, and get them for, like, half price. Like, I'll go creep. I'm like, hey, do they have weighted blankets? Like, I got to go creep the weighted blankets <laughs> because now they have, like, fuzzy covers and you can unzip them and they're, they're and they're not, I mean, it's still not, like, as expensive as they were, which is really kind of cool. Like, if I had to pick a good thing, it's, like, sensory gear is getting a lot more accessible and affordable. Like, if there's a bright side for it, I guess. <laughs> So, uh, fine, final, final question. Um, what projects are you working on right now? Uh, and also please tell people where they can find you online. And after the live, I'll leave the video up so you can come like drop any links you want in the comments. Um, okay. So right now, um, my latest project is my book about a little black autistic girl just um um talking about her struggles with autism but more importantly speaking about the joys of autistic autism um and it's called i'm autistic and i'm phenomenal so that's my children's book that i'm most proud of and it came out on september 1st so um that's what i'm bragging about um i'm also now i'm just working on journals just they're just blank journals to put your feelings into and i illustrated all the covers um, I've done about four so far, so um, I'll probably do about 10 of them. Um, and what else do I want to brag about? I think it's just my book that I want to brag about because it's the book that I'm most proud of. And you can find me as Phenomenally Autistic on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, which I hate right now, but all social media, <laughs> all social media is Phenomenally Autistic and Linktree.com phenomenally autistic and you can um my amazon author page is up there and um past interviews that i've done like podcasts is up there and my um what else is up there uh books that i endorse that i've done because i some of them i don't endorse some of them are out of print so um you can find a lot of things about me articles that i wrote so check out my linktree.com 
slash phenomenally awesome. autistic. Thank you so much for for joining us today and for sharing. And I hope for uh, we get to talk to you again sometime. Yeah, yeah. anytime. Uh, if you have if you ever have like a specific topic you want to dig into, let me know. Okay. Or, you know, or you know, so stay in touch. Uh, I'm gonna hit the little X. And then I'm going to tell them about when I'll be back. Um, but thank you so much. And thank you. We'll talk again. All right. Bye-bye.